So, uh, Tammy was going to be a few minutes late today. So, is anybody willing to take notes until she arrives? I suppose I can try and do it in one meeting. Andrew, we could also just forward her the video if that's helpful. Okay, sure. Yeah, why don't we do that? We have secretaries that just go off the video. Okay. Okay, um, do we have adjustments to the agenda? I think we need to add an executive session at the end. Yep, that was all I had. Um, so we'll do that at, uh, we already have one executive session is number 12, so we'll just add a second after that. Um, and the other thing that I gotten from um, Carmen was talking about commingling ballots if we wind up doing Australian balloting for the... Um, annual meeting vote. So I guess we can talk about that during 8-4. So I don't think we need another agenda item for that. I met with Pam today too, so. Okay. So I guess we'll talk about all that at 8-4. Okay. Then um, we'll move on to public comment. Do we have any public comments at this time? All right, hearing none. Um, we move on to the consent agenda. I'd ask for a motion to approve the minutes of Tuesday, December 21st. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from Tuesday, December 21st. I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Any uh, board comments at this time? Just a quick question. Do we know who is up? I'm not asking for, you know, <laughs> I'm not asking for anyone to, uh, uh, I'm just wondering who's up for re-election and just making sure we know which positions are up for re-election and who might need to get there um, if they want to run again, who might, what positions so need both, to get there. In, in South Royalton, both Peggy and Chris's spots are up for election this year. Peggy, because it was yours mm -hmm. that, um, you know, was, yeah. And then Chris's is, is expiring and um, he shared with the board that he's not running again. Um, so... We're, we had two spots to fill there, or I mean, if Peggy runs again, then one spot to fill, but two positions open for election there. And then Lisa's spot is uh, in Bethel. And so that would be, or I guess um, we have two. Rodney's spot and Rodney. then to run again because he was right. appointed. Okay. Right. Thank okay. you. Uh, yeah, if I can say something here, uh, I filed my petition today that I'm running for the three-year term that Lisa is not running for. Uh, so it's actually the one-year term that Lisa McCrory had actually uh, retired from that is up for grabs. Uh, well, that, I don't know if anybody's running for that, but I'm, yeah, I'm running for a three-year term. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah, I emailed Andrew and uh, and Jamie and let them know that yeah, I'm not I'm up for re-election this year, but I'm not running. I've got a couple other things that have come up that uh, are gonna take my attention for the next few years. So I don't know, maybe in maybe in three or four years I'll I'll run again if there's a, a need and an opening. Yeah, and at this point, I haven't decided either. I've got some girls with some pretty severe mental health issues, teenager dumb that we're going through. So I haven't decided. Okay. Um, I believe the was the deadline to file the twentieth. Um, Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Okay. I'm on the twenty fourth. All right. Any other board comment at this time? 
Okay, then we'll move on to the superintendent report. Uh, good evening. Uh, you have my, my report in hand. I just wanted to provide um, an oral update on where we're at currently with the principal search. Uh, I'm going to be emailing out to the search committee um, tomorrow. Uh, we have a 14 person search committee, so it's pretty large, um, which is great. It represents all stakeholders. I'm really pleased that we have four students uh, on the search committee um, that I think really represent the entire student body, which I'm excited about that. Uh, we've got um, some community um, and, and parents uh, on the committee. Shannon, I believe you said if I didn't find anyone else, you would serve, so I'm counting on you at this point. <laughs> Thank you, Shannon. Um, and uh, also Owen and Andra and Heidi are gonna be on the committee as well. Um, so that search committee will get together next week uh, to review um, applicants. Uh, Michaela Martin's pulling together all the feedback that we've received uh, from folks in regards to the attributes they're looking for in their next leader so that the committee will have that um, when they look to review and score applicants. And then we'll be moving forward the following week with first round interviews. Um, we do have some viable applicants um, in the pool, so I'm excited about that. And, um, you know, the goal would be to have hopefully a, a finalist to recommend to you at the February board meeting. Uh, the committee will move forward uh, to finalists, plural is the hope, and that will be a day-long inter um, interview um, for each person, uh, which will include meeting with faculty, meeting with the community again, meeting with students, and we'll be gathering feedback uh, from those stakeholder groups on each finalist. So that will be part of the process as well. And um, Reed gave me the uh, opportunity last week to fill in for him for a couple of days in person. He was working virtually, but I certainly appreciated that, Reed. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be in your building Wednesday through Friday at the South Royalton campus and at the Bethel campus tomorrow. Um, and uh, certainly it fills my bucket as being a superintendent who's probably a principal at heart, so thanks. Does anybody have any questions for Jamie? Okay, we'll move on to the principals. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so you also have our report and we would like to highlight a few things. We're also going to talk about our, our social emotional data. <clears throat> but if there's anything, Andrew or Reed, you wanna highlight right now might be a good time in the bigger report and then we'll switch over to the SEL. I, I, I just think it's a good time, even though maybe it's not pointed out exactly in our report, to just thank all of our teachers that are being so flexible and working so hard um, to keep normalcy for our kids. Uh, I think every day is kind of like a little puzzle that we figure out about how to cover and who's going where. And I appreciate how hard everyone is working. Um, and I don't think it's stated explicitly like that, but uh, we are powering through this pandemic. And I would say check out our newsletter. It has great highlights. And I, if you haven't, if you don't do Facebook, you should do Facebook because we like our Facebook pages because they're very, very uh, populated frequently now. And it's a lot to be proud about there too. I, I call attention to the org chart that's provided in the principal's report of our N MTSS leadership structure uh, or the staff. And I, I think that captured what we were asked to provide for this meeting. Um, but it, yeah, I think it's worth taking a minute just to explain how that set up that Ashley Grote is the director of student support. Oh, thanks, Ray. Our coordinator of student services. Um, you know, unfortunately, she's been needed to help cover some of the staff shortages this year. Uh, so really, um, you know, we, we haven't gotten as far as we might have with, with our hopes for our MTSS system this year. Uh, underneath that, we have a division between academics and behavior or, or social emotional learning. We've also organized our annual report 
it'll be available for the community in terms of academic learning and social emotional learning. So we've kind of used that as a, a guiding principle. Um, and the, the folks in the social emotional roles are Sandy Tracy and Bethel and Shane Oaks in Royalton, although Shane Oaks has been full time uh, doing COVID coordinating for the SU uh, these last couple of weeks. So um, we're, we're kind of scrambling right now to, to figure out coverage for some of his responsibilities. Um, that team of what you see on that org chart meets every Monday morning uh, with on to Adams from the SU, uh, Chief Academic Officer. And we meet with a larger group of, of staff uh, in smaller groups to talk about <clears throat> universal or academic learning and separately for social emotional learning, uh, as well as in uh, MTSS lingo, the, the most intensive level students with with needs that go outside of our building. Uh, we have, have meetings every three weeks every month uh, with that intensive crew. And that includes Annette Rhodes at the Supervisory Union as the Director of Student Support and uh, our special educators. And happy to answer any questions you have about any of that if we didn't explain it well enough. Okay. Right. Thank you. Um, the uh, other, God, clarifies it a bit. Um, and yes, hopefully we can actually have the people in the roles that they're supposed to be at some point. Someday. Um, does anybody have any other questions for their principals? Would second what you were saying about appreciation for the teachers and all the work that they're doing and it's time. I, I know it's got to be really hard. Did you have something to say, Owen? I was just going to move us into the SEL data, the <laughs> data report that's also in your packet. And whoever is um, facilitating, there we go. <clears throat> it's either Parker or Ray, I think. So just to let you know that this, uh, there's a lot here. And it's, it's important to know that we were in a very different place as far as how students were interacting with each other, the school and teachers last year, as you recall. So the elementary was in place all the time, but the middle and high school were not. So we at the middle and high school are going to report major data. But you'll see that there's a lot of ways to break this down. <clears throat> and if there's anything in particular that you want to look at, we're happy to share more with only caveat being we don't want to expose anybody's privacy, so we would be careful with some some small data. Andrew, we're going to work through this by grade group level, and so Andrew will start us, and Reed will finish us. So I I don't know if we have necessarily want to go slide by slide, but you're welcome to to look at this as a slide by slide synopsis. I think as long as you have the lens of last year did look a lot different. We weren't moving around in the school at all. Specialists were coming to us in our classrooms. We stayed really in pod type uh, groups. <clears throat> I think this year's data is much more, uh, much more uh, resembles what, what real school data looks like. Um, and if you still feel, still feel pretty proud of it, so just don't have sticker shock when you see that things have gone up, but we're moving around and that's what happens with transitions. Um, but we feel really good about it still. So. Um, no surprises to us, really, about what the problems are and when they're happening. Um, what we do is we try to take this data and look at it with our um, SEL team and talk about anything that's popping up that we need to um, wrap around and teach, reteach, uh, and do different or better. Um, and so you're just getting it here and there, but this is sort of what, what our team does um, in a much more frequent basis. Um, I think this is the most important slide for me, which shows you, you know, the, the small triangle in the top corner shows you kind of what you're shooting for is that universally, um, you know, there's 80% of the, I shouldn't say hundred percent, I should say 80% uh, of what we do for everybody. You know, we do that for everyone, but there's about 80% of your write-ups or people fall in, fall into that place. 
Um, and so I think our triangle looks really great. Um, I think we're pretty balanced and what we do for most kids works. And we still have some kids we have to wrap out around a little bit more. But happy to answer any questions that are elementary specific. Uh, they, we did break them into K2 and then three through five. But again, it, for me, it doesn't look too different. Not too many Saturday and Sunday write-ups, thankfully. <laughs> So the pyramid that you had there, that's the percentage of students that have those number of numbers of referrals, right? Fall into those categories. Yeah. 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 I'd be curious to see the percentage of referrals that fall into each of those those categories. So out of the like 228 referrals, how many were by students that, that only had one referral and you know, like the specific numbers. Yeah, we could do that better for next time. I mean, Absolutely. Just just another way of kind of looking at it to see if sure. Sure. Anyway, but uh, it is helpful seeing it this way too. Um, one thing that is not really elementary specific, but just in general, like when, and it, clearly it's hard to look at the data and come to any sort of trends or conclusions based on just given how abnormal everything's been. Um, so like, do you guys have a feeling for how if we're making progress on like how how things are going like if if we had data that was normal what do you think we'd be saying <laughs> so while we don't report it out here there is a way to take the swiss data collection and compare us to like size schools across the country that's the beautiful thing about swiss is that it's not just us that is entering the data into it it's, it's a whole bunch of other schools um, so I think that we're trending well. We probably should show some of that at some point in these reports too. We could do that going forward. I think sometimes that's it's always good to to do that just so you can see like when you feel like it's so bad, you look around and you're like, oh, it's not really bad at all. I I think we feel like we're doing great and that we could do we can always do better with reteaching and and things like that. I think um, I think we're finally getting to the place where we're missing. We're missing in school in person assemblies. I think that's the one place that we keep wanting to get to get back to. That's at least that's hard for us. We've figured out how to rock virtual assemblies, but it's just not the same. And community builders where we can kind of all come together. So I think those are things that have been a struggle this year. And you know, um, why don't we do the six twelve and then we can give you a little bit of an overview at each ending part. You're muted, Reed. We thought it was most helpful to take a look at the major um, discipline referrals or behavior observation data. Uh, a major referral refers to a, an incident where uh, the student's learning and or the class's learning was interrupted or there was a, a safety issue uh, as opposed to a student uh, wore a shirt, you know, that had some profanity on it and they had to be asked to, you know, they got written up for it and they had to be asked to change. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, what you'll see is uh, the major behavior data. Um, there are a couple of, of trends. See, males account for more than, than females uh, in grades 6 through 12. Uh, <clears throat> you'll see that defiance and skipping class are uh, almost, you know, proportionately the same at the middle school and high school. Um, and, and my notes have disappeared on me. Uh, but there are a couple other commonalities there. Uh, overwhelmingly at the middle school and high school, uh, close to, you know, 87 to 90 percent of all, all students aren't really being written up for anything. Or if they were, they got you know, one write up where they had to be talked to, and that was that. Uh, so disproportionately, a very small number of students are accounting for an overwhelming amount of the behavioral, social, emotional work that we do uh, outside a classroom. And Reed has taken much of my thunder, but I will add that, um, and I'm fine with that. Teamwork makes the dream work. Um, you know, coming back from COVID, and 
we're not back from COVID, but moving into where students were interacting in the hallways, at lunch, and on break time. That's where we're seeing a bunch of minor, like micro aggressions. But what you're seeing written up here are the majors. So I think it's 21 of the 23 for the, the, the number of write-ups is skipping class, not being in class. And I attribute some of that to student stamina of uh, having a whole year of not being in a class for the most part, but it's still unacceptable and we're working on it. Okay, I agree. All right. Uh, one of the graphs that we, we skimmed over was a graph that showed month by month data. Um, and it's, yeah, uh, there we had it. Yeah, thanks, Ray. Uh, one of the things that that really stands out, and granted, December is a little bit shorter month uh, because the last couple days of the year we were on vacation. Uh, but it really stands out that at the high school, our number of major uh, behavioral incidents is almost half of what it was when we came back to school. Uh, and I, I think that speaks to the difficulties students had getting back to new expectations, uh, new ninth graders in the building who hadn't been in the building before, uh, some students that we had brought back to the high school from uh, outplacement programs. Uh, again, part of our efforts to be more cost effective is trying to, to take care of more of our kids within the building with our alternative uh, classroom or personalized learning classroom. Uh, so we, we had more intensive students in our building this year. Uh, <clears throat> as we got back to school that we we're, we're dealing with. Um, and I think that's reflected a little bit in our data. Well, I know it <laughs> when you, when you look into where the referrals are coming from, it, it's clear that's a part of that. Anna. Yeah. I just wanted to go back to what um, Owen alluded to as well. I'm wondering, um, if you guys are seeing so one of the things i've really worried about with our students is the the sort of community impact of the stress of covid but also the stress on families from the economics and family structures we're seeing more breakups and separations of families we're seeing a lot more we're seeing deaths in families i'm wondering um a if you're seeing more behavioral issues you think are high for some of that and then b what supports do we have do we have what we need to support our students as they go through that i can uh i'll start the um the real life of everybody's lives is still going on and that freshness of the first part of the pandemic where it felt like everybody hunkered bunkered and were taking care of each other that's worn off some of that there is, a, there is a fatigue, but I tell you, I brag and am so positive of what happens at the school. We, um, I will tell you that all of this trauma that people talk about, we've been working on that for several years. I'm really impressed with the number of resources Jamie's corralled out from outside of the school and the talent that we've found. The two counselors that are assigned to support the middle school in Bethel are exceptional. We and we won the lottery with them and Andrew shares one of them as well. So I think that answers parts and parts of your question. Yeah, we've we've mentioned it before uh, in reports to you, but uh, at the middle school uh, and high school, we both have full-time student assistance professionals who are from outside agencies. So where we shared one uh, for half of the year last year, uh, we now each have two full-time uh, counselors available to kids, which, which has just been a phenomenal resource. Ours at the high school's work is, you know, meeting with over 50 kids on a kind of rotating basis uh, and has a number of support groups that are meeting regularly, which, which is great. Uh, and then we also have more intensive therapy sessions that are one-on-one -on -one through a, a licensed counselor uh, and those those counselors are handling about 20 cases in each building. Um, you know, 10 elementary South Royalton, it's 10 elementary students and 10 high school students. 
So that's that's been huge. Whereas, you know, before we we did this two years ago, you know, we're we're looking at each other this time of year. It's like, well, where can we find a counselor to meet with kids? Uh, you know, just hard to find spots. And I think if we looked at private counselors right now, very few are taking new clients. And if it weren't for the fact that we had that in-house counseling, we'd have a lot of kids whose needs weren't being met. And I'll just follow up. The, the counseling piece is good. The, all the wraparound supports are really good. But, um, you know, we're also offering free meals. And I think the thing that we're offering more than anything else is consistency and predictability with a lot of people who really care about kids. Um, so I think, you know, things could be going to shambles at home, but I think we're offering as much predictability as we can here at school. And I'm happy of how much we've been in school and um, making it look as normal as possible. Go ahead, Peggy. Well, I was just going to say, in my own personal experience with my girls, we've had to get our counseling outside of school, and the school has been extraordinarily wonderful about dismissing them from class so that they can get that help that they need. So I, as a parent, have been very appreciative. All right. Um, well, thank you for the report on that. Um, it, was, it was nice. And it would be great to see those uh, comparisons to how we're doing against the other schools at some point. Um, but yeah, thank you for the report. Does anybody have any more questions for the principals? All right, we'll move on to Tara. Good evening, everyone. You have my report. It outlines the due dates for the month of January. I will update you. We did um, complete and apply for the local food service incentive grant. So hopefully we'll find out if we are the recipients of that. And then otherwise, my rest of my stuff comes up later, your audit and your budget. So if there's any questions, I'll happily answer them. All right, thanks, Tara. Um, we'll talk to you later. Let's move on to the negotiations committee. Shannon, you got it? Yeah, sure. So um, things are going well there. We are meeting with the teachers um, every couple of weeks. And um, Jamie, can I say where we are just really basically? Yeah, I mean, I think we can say we've settled on ground rules and we've each exchanged our, our proposals and yeah, we meet tomorrow to talk about the proposals. What, what Jamie said, that's where we're at. We're meeting in executive session, so it's always hard to know exactly how much we can share, <laughs> um, but all the negotiating is being done in the executive session. So. Yeah, those, those things have been on the agenda, so I think we're in good shape. Well, thank you for doing that and the work on that. Sharon's yeah. great, but we're really excited to have her on the committee. Oh, bless you. Now I need right. to turn my microphone off because Encanto is playing in the background. My kids are dancing in the kitchen, so. All right, task forces. I can go first if you want. We continue to meet on recruitment. Uh, at our last meeting, we made our plans to visit ARSA, and that's going to be in early February. And we, Lindy has been so supportive, and she. we're going to use the very similar model to what we used when we went to Sharon. And I think it's going to serve us very well. I'm looking forward to it. And then the other addition I'll just let the board know is uh, the high school has been working on an ad in the Herald um, that Kate McLean has almost final draft of. So I expect that it's probably going to be in there next week. 
Uh, so stay tuned on an advertisement on the high school in the Herald. Great. And I think as far as the preschool committee, we gave our proposal and it's in the budget to add a teacher and a preschool para. So I think that committee is, we're done. Till next year. Was uh, there anything from the Energy Committee? Is that, uh, other so the Energy Committee met last week, although I had to miss the meeting. Uh, but uh, looking at the minutes from the meeting, uh, they just discussed the, the EEI uh, proposal and work that's going on. Uh, I guess they've done some initial site visits, and then they were supposed to, I guess, according to the minutes, visit again today to... Uh, wrap up uh some of the stuff that they were looking at uh and then uh and then we should be getting a report on that uh from them in the future in terms of proposals for work to be done all right sounds good any task force questions all right do we have a uh, student representatives in-house today Grace was not able to attend tonight. Um, she said that the student council didn't have any updates from last month. Um, of course, we had a holiday in the middle of it. Um, but she said she wasn't able to attend, but no updates. And the student council is looking to secure a second rep. Alexis has resigned, um, is my understanding. So um, stay tuned about it. Hopefully, a new appointment next month. And. Uh, Grace is on the hiring committee as well, just so you know, as a student rep for the, the new principal. Right. Okay, um, we'll move to our discussion items. Uh, the green and gold scholarship, it looks like you sent out um, kind of a, the requirements that UVM sends to us. They do seem pretty clear cut. Um, so it doesn't seem like we have much much flexibility there to try and offer it to somebody else who will be interested in attending UVM if somebody who would normally be the person isn't eligible. Um, go ahead, Rodney. Rodney, now you're muted. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I talked a little bit of with uh, Lisa about that, and and uh, UVM will accept the if you put a plan on how to pick the student, they will adjust how you you do it. Um, Randolph does it where they have an essay written. Uh, you, you know, you have to have a certain average and this and that. And you, if you apply to UVM, and then you can write an, an essay to apply for the scholarship, and they can pick it that way. It doesn't. UVM has to accept the the uh, system that you put in place, but you can do that. And she was looking into that, but obviously she's not here today, so I don't know uh, how that stands right now. All right. Um, how about if somebody would like to write up an alternate proposal that we could discuss next meeting, we can take a look at it and then vote on it next meeting if there's, I mean, it seems, that seems like something that would be worthwhile um, if there is something that we could do um, for it that UVM would accept. So I, mean, I guess somebody wants to write up a proposal about that and we can vote on it. That seem reasonable. Owen? I'm not sure if Jamie will want to weigh in, but it seems like, <clears throat> Maybe that's the board assigning somebody on the administrative team through school counselor's office. Because it sounds like there's maybe one sitting over in Randolph. Sure. Um, is there, and is that something somebody on the administration would be interested in doing? Or, uh, I, I think. Maybe we should just ask Lisa 
to send what she has and or suggest any changes because we know the Randolph plan was approved by UVM. So why create something from scratch? And then we, we could take a look at what Randolph does and see whether or not that that meets our needs. <clears throat> Go ahead, Tammy. Hi. So, Reed, did you just say that research is going to be done to determine how we can create a proposal to change that? No, I, I said oh. Lisa okay. Floyd, who's at Randolph, who brought this uh, agenda item forward. Yep, I was uh, trying to find out if you wanted me to put those exact words in the minute or minutes or a more generalized statement. I understand you want to put something specific, so I'll capture that. Thanks. Okay. Now, did you have something else? Oh no. Okay. Uh, do you have any anything to add to this, Jamie? Yeah, I'm sorry. I stepped out to the bathroom. I, I, I'm. We met for a pre-board before and uh, talked about it. I, mean, I think that we could certainly come up with criteria. Um, it, it's not just GPA, right? Like there could be some other weighting factors um, that we could use as an algorithm that we could present to the board. I think the big key is though is that. It, it's whatever that algorithm comes out with, right? Whatever that criteria is, it's not based on whether or not the, the candidate chosen decides whether or not they want to um, pursue UVM or not. Okay. Jamie, what, what Rodney shared was that in Randolph, they applied <clears throat> for, for an exception to the normal school algorithm uh, and they use an essay as a criteria so there's a scoring of their, an essay, which probably accomplishes the goal of determining who really is interested in UVM. Like, who would want to write an essay if they, they weren't interested in, in going to UVM and getting the scholarship? I mean, maybe someone would to keep their options open. But <clears throat> what, what is a little bit tricky is that, is that we have to give uvm our name at the end of the junior year so students haven't really clarified where they you know are even looking at schools at that point in the year um, before you know senior year i mean some may know but most you know work all the way up into december to figure out where they're going to apply go ahead on yeah, so Jamie, when you were out also, Andrew offered it up to the group if somebody wanted to um, write something. And we I suggested we wait for you to um, see if you wanted to have that assigned to one of us. And that's where we got in the conversation here. You mean like a criteria? Well, or like say, you know, they they tell you to make this happen and then you tell somebody on our team to, to make this happen with like the school counselors and reaching out to randolph if that's one of the schools that does this i mean i think really i just need a direction from the board that they would like to pursue an alternative approach and if they do then my what i would do is i've worked with the principals and i think we should have a committee that we that we put together um frankly that should have faculty and i think student voice if we're trying to really engage our students um, in regards to leadership opportunities to formulate a procedure that we use, and then we could share that procedure with the board um, for you guys to take a look at. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, I mean, I, it does seem like if Randolph has something that's already been accepted by um, UVM, then kind of going with that approach makes sense just since, but, you know, maybe we can have whatever committee be, look at that and then see if they want to make any changes it, to, in my mind it does make sense to try and have that scholarship go to somebody who would really want to it want to use it um since it is kind of a valuable thing and would be good for the community to be able to take advantage of it um so i'm i'm in favor of coming up with something that we can look at next meeting hopefully you know it'd be good to get it something in place sooner rather than later just in case people want to apply for it um, with whatever application process we decide for and give people enough time to take advantage of it for this year 
Anybody else have thoughts on from the board? So do we want to take a vote to or I guess is this enough, Jamie, to just kind of I think this is enough. Yeah, you're just yeah, you're asking that we, we bring back a proposal by next month. Okay. All right. Audit. Um twenty twenty one audits. Um so we went over the audit at your last meeting and you couldn't accept it at that point because we didn't have the Bethel student activity accounts in there. So I sent you the draft audit that has all of that. So if you guys are ready, I would request that you make a motion to accept the audit. And if there's any other questions, I can answer that as well. Uh, do we need specific language for accepting the audit or? Just that we make a motion to accept the FY 2021 audit. Okay. Um, I would entertain a motion to accept the FY 2021 audit. I'll make a motion that we accept the FY 2021 audit. I'll second it. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the FY 2021 audit has been accepted. Thank you all very much. Thank you. All right, draft four of the 2023-22-23 budget. And yeah, tax revenue and all that stuff. Kara, would you like to talk about it? So since the last meeting, we haven't made too many adjustments. Um, the SU assessments have been updated. We already had discussed that this budget draft adds the preschool teacher and the preschool paraeducator at the Royalton campus per the recommendations of the pre-K committee. Uh, other than that, the only other changes that were made on the expenditure budget was the updates to the tech center uh, tuition based on the six semester average data that was provided to us by the agency of education. So at this point, this expenditure budget if you want to scroll all the way down to the bottom, Parker. The expenditure budget is at $12,454,605, which is an increase of $428,506 from FY22, which equates to a 3.56% increase. And I'll just jump in with the board on the expenditure side. Um, we were trying to stay under three percent and just the the addition of the pre-k um full-time fte and the para um did put us over that otherwise we'd be we'd be down in the two percent range just so the board knows um and of course the other thing that's in this budget is this com community service coordinator um which remember we we did receive the community schools grant um, from the Agency of Education for 750000 but we started to budget that coordinator position locally, 0.5 FTE, to make certain that as we look to build more community-based programming, that's not just something that goes away. Um, so I just wanted to add that too. So this budget um, does, you know, result in, um, you know, really 2.5 additional FTE. Um, from this current fiscal year to next. I think the other thing to just remind the board is, is that we actually did have a budget that went down last year. So when you do think about inflation and increases in, in different things like health insurance and salaries, um, you know, we are up 3.56%, um, but there is, there is that additional 2.5 FTE in it. So in general, I think the principals have done a really nice job um, making certain that they have the a budget that really supports the programming that the board wants to emphasize um, and look to pursue. And I think it should serve us well into the future as well, as we look to really make ourselves a destination school district. Um, and so I'll, ju I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I would also say adding the preschool staff is hopefully going to increase our student counts for the equalized pupils and that will eventually you know be revenue neutral or something hopefully 
So rating study, um, I don't know if you guys saw that, that was in my report in both scenarios of the waiting study that's going to be in front of the legislature. Um, it does result in, a, in positive trends for us in regards to equalized pupils based to, on our demographics. So that, that's good news as we look to the future as well. <clears throat> when is that actually going before the legislature? It's, well, the, the House Ed Committee plans to take it up this year. Um, I think it's one of those bills that they're hoping to take some action on, Andrew. They are talking about a phased in approach though over a five year time span. Um, and so stay tuned. There hasn't been any additional testimony on it yet. The thing that's getting a lot of attention right now is the transition that's supposed to happen July 1st in regards to special education funding. The legislature is discussing whether or not they're going to put that on hold again. Um, so we'll stay tuned to that too. Okay, does anybody have any questions on the expenditure side of things? So we'll move on to the revenue side then, Andrew? Yep. So right up at the top there, um, as we discussed at your last meeting, the unassigned fund balance at the end of fiscal year 21 was $712,781. So those funds have to either be used as offsetting revenue or they need to be put in front of the voters to put into reserve funds on your warnings. So I used $200,000 of that surplus as an offsetting revenue and recommend that the remaining 500,000 go to reserve funds. And then as we go down the list, the revenues from local sources, um, interest we've remained at 11,000. At your last meeting, um, you ex you kept your announced tuition rate the same. So we have 35 students at the 17.8. We have two preschool students currently that come from outside of the Rudd district. So I have that in the budget too at the FY23 rate of 3,656. I did remove the $12,000 from student activities because we have not actually recorded any revenue there over the last several years. So I have taken that out. So that gives a total local sources revenue of $648,312. So then the next section down is the revenue that we receive from state and federal sources. The education spending grant, your Act 68, that is uh, the expenditure budget less the local offsetting revenues. The Act 60 related transportation, that is based on the prior year contract and you actually received a credit in your contract last year. So I've made that adjustment to the amended contract and we're historically seeing about a 44% reimbursement from the state for that. So that's where that number comes from. Vocational transportation, because you do transport students for vocational, that is also a reimbursement that we submit to the agency each year. And so I've adjusted that based on our FY22 cost. Adult learning, um, we've seen some reimbursement, so I kept that at 5,000. And then your driver's education reimbursement, I've kept that at the 3,500. For a total state and federal local reven or revenue sources, sorry, of $11,318,031. The school-wide consolidated federal program, this is uh, the Title I funds that you receive. And I've reduced that based on what you received in your FY22 funding. And then the last line there is the tech center from the state to the tech center. That's also known as your on behalf of payment. So that is both an expense and a revenue. So it is actually zeros themselves out. And that's based on the tech file um, six semester average that we got from the agency of education times this year's rate of the nine thousand seven hundred eighty five dollars any questions on the revenue um for the student services the twelve thousand dollars has it just been <clears throat> down for the um pandemic years or has it been prior to that that we haven't been getting revenue there I don't see any revenue recorded in there back to the 18, 19 years. And then what was that supposed to be? I was assuming it was, you know, revenue that students raised basically, but 
I mean, stu this money that students raise, that goes into the student activity account. Right. So that's not even something that normally hits the general fund. So I, I mean, I can't speak to why it was in there way back when, Andrew. It was there before my time and we haven't gotten any, so. Okay. And it does seem like the sort of thing where if we do get money in that category and we wanted, you know, we could just put it into the balance carryover from previous, you know, like the next year or something and have it. And usually when students are raising funds, it's earmarked for a specific purpose. Right. So it wouldn't go in to offset general fund expenses. Okay. Any other questions on the revenue? Parker, can you go to the tax sheet, please? So Christy sent around a revised tax sheet um, after the initial board report went out because we received an adjusted equalized pupil number from the Agency of Education. So the change from that, um, the initial equalized pupil count we got from them was 573.53, and that's gone up to the 579.44 that's the big change there so starting right up at the top we have the expenditure budget of the 12 million four hundred fifty four thousand six hundred and five dollars less your offsetting revenue that we just reviewed of one million two hundred seventeen thousand seven hundred and thirty eight dollars leaving an act 68 education spending of eleven million two hundred thirty six thousand eight hundred and sixty seven dollars divided by your equalized pupil of the five hundred seventy nine point four four gives you an equalized spending per pupil cost of nineteen thousand three hundred ninety two dollars and sixty three cents which is below the threshold for 23 of nineteen thousand nine hundred and seventy seven so we don't actually need to apply your exclusions so then you take your per pupil spending and you divide that by the yield. And again, we're using the more conservative yield of that $12,937, which is an increase from the 11317 that we have in the current fiscal year. So that gives you an equalized residential tax rate of 1.4990. The merger incentive is gone now, so that's no longer applied. And then the equalized non-residential rate is set by the tax department, and that's 1.4820. So then from there, we go down to each individual town. So in Bethel, the CLA, Common Level of Appraisal, went from 101.80 to 97.24%. So you take your equalized tax rate, you divide it by your CLA, and that gives you the FY23 homestead tax rate of 1.5416, which is a reduction of 0 0.0220 over the FY22 rate of 1.5636. So then we go to the Royalton side, and Royalton is the only town in our supervisor union that actually saw a small increase in their CLA, and that went from the 94.98 to 95.34. So again, we take that equalized tax rate of 1.4990, divide that by the CLA, and that gives us a projected tax rate of 1.5723, which is a reduction of 10.35 cents over the FY22 rate. Any questions on the tax sheet? Um. This is kind of going. Just next. Uh, this is kind of going back to the revenue thing. But uh, what were you basing the two hundred thousand dollars that you put as a carryover on? Were you targeting a rate, or were you targeting some? Just I was trying to keep us under the threshold, Andrew. Okay. And used a round number. <laughs> you can make any adjustments to that that you would like. Um, does anybody have any comments at this point? Questions? I was just wondering, like, if we had been targeting the tax rate, like the first one, basically Bethel was even and Royalton was down eight cents. Um, you know, if we wanted to keep that target and 
and decrease the carryover a little bit to increase the amount we have in our reserve funds or something. Um, just a thought. So it's about 75,000. You can see right there in the center of the page to impact the tax rate by a penny. Right. So if you would like as a board to reduce what we use from the surplus, just let me know and we can run those numbers. Right. I think uh, for me, Andrew, was that I wanted to make certain that the ed spending didn't go up too much per pupil. I think, I mean, I still think it's a bit sticker shock, shock to see us at 19.3. Um, um, I think that that's something that we're going to need to explain um, in regards to reduction of equalized pupils again. Um, it certainly was about trying to come forward to the voters with a responsible budget that is down on both sides um as a unified district i thought it was important to see that we tried to cut taxes on both sides not just one i still think that that gets confusing for folks yeah no i agree um my concern would be the uh you know we're relying a lot on the yield amount here that increase really helped us a lot and yeah. if that's if that's going to be the way it is going forward then we're in a great position i think um if this is kind of a one-year blip and then it's going to go back down then, you know, having more in like the reserve funds to maybe offset any, you know, we might be able to use more from the reserve funds, basically take the surplus that we have now and spread it out over a few years to even that out if there is kind of a hit from the yield going back down. Um, so that'd be my one thought. But I'm also this also looks good the way it is so i'm not necessarily advocating it one way or the other i'm just kind of floating that idea the other thing for the board to keep in mind is i do think that the reserve money that we're putting away we need to make certain we communicate to the voters too um that part of why we worked really hard on running the surplus was to pay off debt but also to put money away knowing that we have some pretty significant work coming up i think when we see the uh proposal from EI, like certainly there's going to be some pretty significant savings because we have such the maintenance um, and they're feeling like our buildings can become much more efficient. I also think we're going to need some money to put toward it. Um, so I think there's when we're communicating to the public around putting money away, I think we should let them know that it's on an eye on trying to deal with delayed maintenance. Just to give you an idea, Andrew, if I take the 200000 off as an offsetting revenue, um, it would be a $0.05 cent increase in Bethel and a 7.5% decrease in Royalton. Because we're on the threshold. We are. Well, I, I mean, if 75000 is $0.01, cent, shouldn't it be about $0.02.5 cents in? This is seven? just, I plug it in after your CLA. So okay. that's what the swing did after I took out the 200000 but Tara, is it because they went over the threshold? No, nope, we're not over the threshold yet. We're at nineteen seven thirty-eight. Yeah. Okay. Um, do any other board members have comments? What are you guys' thoughts as far as the overall budget and We go around around the group. Oh. Go ahead, Randy. Oop, you're muted again. Yeah, I like the way this is. I, I, I like the looks of it. It's you know, I, I think it's about as good as we can do. I I, I wouldn't want to take any less or more out of the uh, reserve fund. Okay, Chris. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I like the idea of, of, you know, giving, you know, putting some of it back in to help offset some costs. So, you know, in some way giving some of it back to the taxpayers, but then holding on to part of it to pay for other things. I think the one thing I would say is, I don't, I don't know if we should check with, uh, with Lyle and uh, from the, you know, from the 
building work perspective and and see if he thinks that that's a an okay number to go forward with into building reserves uh for you know for some of the work that's coming up in the future uh just make sure that we're in a good spot for that going forward uh maybe Jamie, jamie's already talked to him about that too yeah, I've talked to him. i mean chris he i think his desire would be for us to put as much away as we can um and you know i think it's it's really just us about trying to put money away the best we can but also just trying to be respectful in regards to folks around taxes i think that's where we we landed at this particular position yeah um Um, Peggy, do you have any thoughts? Okay, I'm here, but I got a tractor going by. <laughs> um, I guess I would be in favor of leaving it the way it's been proposed here right now, because I think it's just important to show the town that we really have tried to do our best, and maybe it'll only be for one year, but we've had so many tax increases on schools in the past years that maybe it would be nice to see a decrease. <laughs> That's my opinion. Um, Shanna? Yeah, I mean, for, for all of those reasons, I'm in agreement with the, the group that we should leave it. I, I want to save for a rainy day, but um, I like this way, the way it's balanced so far. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, yeah, my only thought with it was you know when we when the initial tax sheet came out that was initially sent you know it was we we got a bit more tax savings because the equalized people changed so whether adding a little bit more back to get it back to where it was before the equalized people change whether we want to do that but which would be about a hundred thousand dollars more in the reserve fund but we can leave it the way it is if people like two cents down in bethel and ten cents down in royalton like that's the consensus all right um do we feel comfortable enough with the way things are looking to would anybody like to make a motion or um do we need more time with the budget I'll make a motion that we accept the budget as it's proposed here. There's some specific language. Specific language, I'm sorry. The motion, if you're ready, would be to, to approve the FY22-23 budget in the amount of $12,454,605, which results in a per pupil cost of 19000 Three hundred ninety-two dollars and sixty-three cents. Those are the two numbers that have to go on your warning. So those are the two numbers we have to accept in your minutes. I may need some help with that, Tara, because I'm not seeing them right here in front of me. I'm <laughs> sorry. I can write that in the chat for you. Okay. <laughs> I see the 19 number. I just don't see the exact 12 million number that you've stated. Gosh. I'll type whatever she sends. So oh, there you go. <laughs> so yes, I would like to make the motion to accept the fiscal year 22-2023 budgets in the amount of twelve million four hundred fifty-four thousand six hundred and five dollars which results in a per pupil spending of nineteen thousand three hundred ninety-two dollars and sixty-three cents. I'll second that. Did you get that well enough, Tammy? Yes, I see the text now. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks. Okay, do we have any discussion?
All right, we'll do a roll call vote for this one. Um, Chris? Aye. Uh, Shannon? Aye. Peggy? Aye. Rodney? Aye. Right, I'll vote aye as well. So the FY22-23 budget is accepted. Good job, everybody. Thank you very much, administration, for all the work and putting that together. Thank you, Thank you all. Andrew, who accepted that motion? This, who seconded it? Uh, Chris did. I did. Thank you. Great. Well, that's now we just need to get it passed. No problem, right? Okay. Certainly helps that it's a decrease in tax rate. So, yeah. Um, okay. So let's talk about the annual meeting dates and provision to move to Australian ballot. Um, and how we want to proceed with that. Do we know what the town's doing? Yeah, I, I can update you based on our conversation with Pam. We were supposed to be with Carmen too, but she wasn't able to make it. But my understanding is, is that they're working under the premise that both towns are going to vote via Australian ballot on town meeting day. Um, we got from Pam today. Um, and she's hoping to get our warning by no later than the first part of next week, just so the board knows. So we'll talk about that later tonight, too. And the provision of so S72 was signed by the governor on Friday. Uh, and so what that allows you to do is two things you could delay, or you could move to have a, a um, your vote via Australian ballot. And I have the motion if that's what you decide to do. So that's the info I have about the towns and, and just what you can do. Okay. Um, speaking for myself, I'm comfortable with going with Australian ballot again this year. Um, you know, I do in general think having the meeting and, and voting from the floor is what I would prefer in a normal year. But I think this year, I don't mind doing Australian ballot again. And I will say that last year, it was very nice having had our budget passed going into, you know, April and March or April and May and not having delayed. Um, so, you know, I, I'd, I'd be in favor of voting Australian ballot on town meeting day. Does anybody else have thoughts? I would agree with that. Okay. Um, yeah, the only complication I could see is, you know, from a floor vote, it would be possible as far as the reserve funds go, like if people decided they wanted to, you know, send more towards tax relief or more towards the reserve funds, like that's something that they can amend in an in-person meeting, which you can't do with the Australian ballot. So that would be the one caveat is we do have this big surplus and this is giving us less flexibility as a, you know, town to decide as a group, as opposed to just us. But I think given the circumstances, yeah. Um, Anybody else, Rodney or Shannon or Peggy, do you guys have preferences? I think my preference has always been to have an in-person meeting, but in this era, we we really can't do that. But so we need to do an extra super job of making sure that we're very transparent to the voters, that we have got everything out there on the table so that they can see it. And I think if we do that, we should be okay. Yeah. Um, so we'll, yeah, okay. Shannon and Rodney, you guys okay with Australian ballot as well? I, I am. In the past, we, you know, the thing I love most, aside from getting to see everyone at the school meeting, is that we get a time and a place to present our case. 
I'm wondering if we could put that together in I mean, not even just a Zoom meeting because getting people to come is so hard, but put it together and put it out there on town websites and just do a presentation of this is where we are with the budget um, as a recorded like lecture. I mean, I've been having to take a lot of those for CEUs. I, there's a way to do it <laughs> where you can see the people who are there and the it would be sort of just like this, only lecture format with slides. Sure. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Make kind of a produced video of of what our presentation would be normally. Yeah, we yeah and if we can get that out. District that did a YouTube of their budget presentation and if that i mean we need to get our mailer out relatively quickly um but if that's something that you wanted to do we also could potentially put a link to a youtube video in the mailer or information about that as well just an option or maybe just an alert to be watching for announcements by facebook and at the town clerk's office on how to access that that we may not have that link quite yet. Yeah, that sounds good. And, you know, we will have probably two meetings. Like, I, I imagine we'll have a meeting just over Zoom probably the night before, maybe, but since we usually have done the, the usual annual meeting night is the night before a town meeting. So I would. And you're required to also do one 10 days prior. Right. No, no, no. Within 10 days, Tara. What was that, no. Jamie? One within 10 days. No, yeah, no later, no earlier than 10, but it has to be within 10. So one would be fine. Or you do two. We did two last year. Yeah. I think we should do one the Monday before and then another sometime the week before that. And if we can get the video out prior to both of those so that people can be ready with questions for those meetings, I think that would be helpful. Peggy? Uh, will the uh, select board be doing a quote unquote pre town meeting? Um, yes. And, and then, that's, uh, that's usually the week before. It's February 22nd at 6 30 p.m. is their pre town meeting. Okay. So we Zoom could, I mean, day. we could be a part of that too, either be before or after. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that's the Tuesday before. Yeah, I think. What's, what's yeah? What's, that's what it usually is. Was that select board reference to Royalton or Bethel? Right. Oh, yeah, that's right that's there, too. That's the Royalton one is always the week before. Is there anything for Bethel? Pam did not mention their date and what they were. Just looking for parity. Um, okay, well, is everybody okay with uh, doing the night before Monday as one of the meetings since that's kind of our traditional traditional meeting date anyway? And I'm assuming it'll be virtual. Is that what the board's thinking? Yes. I mean, we could probably do some sort of hybrid like like we have been for regular school board meetings. I don't know, whatever whatever you're comfortable with, I guess. You know, I'm I'm fine with that. We'll just need it on your warning. That's why I'm asking for those details. Okay. Um, does anybody have an objection to doing it hybrid? It seems like Nobody actually, um, it would be nice to have the option for people to show up if they're comfortable and masked and all that. OK. 
Okay. So I'm uh, that Monday night before at six. Sure, six. Work for everybody. Okay, six o'clock. Is that? I'm I'm trying to remember what we've done in the past. Sometimes we've done seven, but I can't remember what the usual annual meeting. I time. think it's typically at six, but maybe my brain is. I think we did it earlier because of childcare. How late are the polls open? Well, this would be the night before. Oh, yes. Okay, good. Um, that was something we had to consider previously on something else. That's true. Yes, we did it the Tuesday night. So Morning last year time. you did February 16th at 5 and then March 1st at 6. Okay. So we'll do, in this case, it's February 28th at um at six and what do people want to do for the the meeting before that do we want another different day than a monday just to mix it up or you know, I, I guess I'll say that we try to do that all the time to see if we can get people to come and whatever we try <laughs> doesn't usually work very well. Um, I think five o'clock is hard for people, um, especially those who aren't working from home. So if we can keep it at six um, or 630 even, that's maybe easier for parents to do after they've gotten some dinner, but before bedtime. Um, and people who are working, I know not everyone in town's a parent, but um, that's just what I would say. I don't know that it matters what night you put it on, though. Heck, at this point, it's COVID. Like, put it on a Friday. I'm still here, so, right? Yeah. And we don't have basketball on Fridays. <laughs> um, Should we do both Mondays at 6? Yeah. I think that's well, then. It is school vacation week the week before, so would we care about doing it on the 21st when it's school vacation week? Or, and the week before that is Valentine's Day, which we probably shouldn't do. So I guess just the 21st and 28th at six o'clock. Or we could also do, the reason why we did it um, five o'clock on the Tuesday the previous time was because that was our regular board meeting wasn't it when we did the meeting you're right. the and like board. the 15th you're right so what about moving our regular board meeting on the 22nd or wait no it's the 15th yep you're right that's the 15th um moving that meeting to like starting that at seven and doing the regular doing our informational meeting at six that works for me you want to move that we'll move our regular board meeting to that 21st is that what you're thinking no um just doing the informational meeting before our regular board meeting on the 15th uh, the mailer was wicked tight for us to get out in time for your first info meeting and tara i'm looking at you but i'm just thinking a month and we don't even have a warning left to pull together the whole mailer get it to print and get it in people's mailboxes i remember yeah. we him to the post office that Friday before the following Tuesday. So I would actually prefer having the additional week to ensure everyone gets their mailer before your first informational meeting. Yeah, the problem is the Royalton Pretown meeting is the 22nd. So I guess if we did that, we could maybe do it at like start the informational meeting at 530 so that we're done by the time the 630 Pretown meeting starts. I thought you guys had already said you wanted to do it the two straight Mondays. Yeah, we did. I was just floating the idea of combining it with a regular board meeting. But yeah, and the that the the first Monday there is school break, so that may not matter for a lot of folks and community members, but you won't get a lot of parents there necessarily. Yeah, but we also do have the one the following Monday, which is also school break, but still. Right. 
All right. Should we just go with the two Mondays then, the 21st and 28th? I prefer that it just be if you want to get your mailer out in people's hands before you hold your first informational meeting. I just, I was wicked anxious um, the last time because it just barely get in people's mailboxes before. Okay. All right. Um, so if we are going to move to Australian ballot, we need to have a motion and and vote on that. I think. Yep. Tara, do you have? Pop in their chat since it, that seems easier for folks. Yep. Uh, and just can you confirm for me, Andrew, was it six o'clock on the 21st or five o'clock? Six o'clock. Thank you. Anybody want to make that look? So I move that the board approve the use of Australian ballots for the annual school board meeting as authorized in S-172 of the 2022 legislative session. All second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the only person I didn't hear an eye from was uh, oh, I he dropped off anyway. I guess uh, we have a poem still, so I'll put eye as well. So um, if that motion is accepted. Um, so the next thing with Australian ballots is uh, Carmen has asked if we could um, take a vote to make it so that they don't have to commingle the ballots before counting them. It's much easier Andrew, for towns if they can count in the individual towns instead of having to ship them to a central location. Andrew, I'm going to have you guys do that when we have a special meeting here in the next week to adopt your warnings because the governor had not signed that bill as of this afternoon yet. Oh, okay. He had only signed 172, um, not the other corresponding bill for some reason. It's been on his desk since Friday. Um, so I was gonna have you take official action once he's actually put it into law. Okay. Well, stay tuned then. All right. So should the, but, should the minutes reflect the approval of the Australian uh, ballot or not? Yes. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, so... Um, then let's talk about our mailer. Um, I I thought what we sent out last year was great. I thought you guys did a great job on it. So I'd just be looking for that again. Anybody else have thoughts? Um, we'll need, we'll submit a letter to you guys um, from the board. Um, I'll get started on drafting that and send it out to you guys for comments and revisions. If anybody else has, you know, thoughts on what we should include in it, email me in the next little bit. Um, is there anything else you need from us to help get the mailer or like any other? Yeah. Um, the, the only other thing is, like I said, just that the board knows, um, we will need a special meeting to get your warning adopted. And I was just gonna suggest that maybe folks would be willing to do a quick meeting to do that. Like at 545 next Monday, prior to the full board meeting. I don't know if that's helpful for folks since many of you are already going to be out. It shouldn't take more than 15 minutes. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, that should be fine. Yeah, that should be good. And then as far as the information, the budget presentation, um, we did have a, a, a set of slides that we worked on. 
next year? Does it make sense to start there again? Um, and start with that slideshow. There was stuff the principals filled in. Andrew, there was stuff Tara filled in. And there was stuff that the board filled in. Um, yeah. No, I think that's good. Okay. Good, good start. That's all I have. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess let's, uh, we'll get the letter to you guys. When, when do we need to have that? Ideally, I would love to get this to the printer by the end of next week, if that's a goal we can meet. Okay. All right, we're so up we'll against all the towns also at the printer so and she it comes in first come first serve so ideally sure. the sooner we can get it to her the better and then i'll just need also some pictures to put into the mailer like we have in the past from the schools okay um anything else we need to discuss on so it seems like once the mailer's out, then we can work on the slides and, and get that all figured out. Our production crew going on a video. Okay. Um, we'll move on. So we've done both action audit items at this point. Um, unless anybody has anything else, we'll move on to resignations, new hires. We don't have any resignations um, or new hires at this time, but we do have a faculty member that has announced their retirement. So I've turned it for next, they're retiring at effective the end of this year, um, just so the board knows. Andra? Yeah, Holly Brennan Cook shared um, after she came back from break that she is going to retire to be more of a caregiver for her father. So we will definitely be missing her, but um, wish her well. Uh, and know that she has left a big legacy and some big shoes to fill as she moves along. She has a lot of year left in her, though. <laughs> well, that's sad news, but certainly wish her well. Okay, um, public comments. Do we have any public comments at this time? All right, hearing none, um, uh, we'll move on to the executive session. I'd enter, accept, or entertain a motion to enter executive session um, for attorney client privileged communication. Um, who would we need to have in this? I think you can invite all three principals, and Tara and myself, if you're willing. Okay. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we enter executive session to discuss uh, attorney client privileged communication, uh, including the superintendent, the three principals, and the business manager. I'll second it. <laughs> All right. So we're coming out of executive session at 7.45 with no action taken. I'd entertain a motion to enter executive session for what's this next one, Jamie? Personnel, and we would just need Owen and I. Somebody want to make a motion? Did he say personnel? Okay, I would make a motion to enter executive session to discuss the personnel issue um, with Jamie and Owen Bradley. I'll second it. Go ahead. Okay, I would make a motion but, that sorry. we're leaving executive session at 7.55. Now go ahead. I would make a motion that we accept Holly Williams' request for a year of unpaid leave. Second.
Andrew? Yeah, sorry, I was just making note of your <laughs> language. All right. Um, okay. Uh, do we have any discussion? Can, can we amend that motion to make sure that we clarify it that it's for the next, for the ensuing um, school year? Starting on July 1st? Yeah. yeah. I think we can amend the motion. Okay. So I would amend the motion to say that it's, it's a one year requested leave starting on July 1st, 2022. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We accepted the motion. Okay. I uh, don't think we have any other today. Um, future agenda items. We have the green and gold scholarship again. Um, any other future agenda items? We have our, yeah, our next meeting is going to be uh, to accept the warrant. Um, so the next meeting is going to be Monday, January, whatever next Monday is, January 24th at 5.45 to accept the warrant. Anything else people have for future agendas? Uh, we have pathways for uh, February, an update and, and process around how we're doing there. Um, and we'll, we will have our high school pathways coordinator in place um, by the, then. Well, actually well in place. Um, and so we'll have a presentation to do on pathways for you in February. I had that down from the last meeting. All right, sounds great. Okay, so then we have our meeting on Monday, 545, and then regular meeting on Tuesday, February 14, 15th um, at 6. I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So seconded. <laughs> great. Well, Good thanks, night, everybody. everybody.